most these schools are connected somehow to wider academia. In wider academia, there will be innovation. Drop yourself there, find a place to say, hey, can I, can I, buy, you, can I buy everyone coffee? Can I just figure out all the other stuff you don't want to do? Get involved in the process of proof of concept. Get involved in the concept, proof of concept, proof of LD, get it to the first customer. If you're involved in it, you will learn things. So what I like about B-School graduates Hi everyone, this is the Peking University HSBC Business School Entrepreneurship Society. Today we are speaking with Mr. Varen. He is the VP of Talent at Origin Ventures Private Limited. So Mr. Varen, may I ask you to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, thank you so much, Nicholas. So um, I am Hari. Um, you just call me that. Um, so I spent about 20 years in makeshift consulting, human resources. I've worked both uh, as a consultant as well as being on the client side. Um, and within innovation and startups, I think this, um, my first stint in that was around 2006, um, very short opportunity as a recruiter, um, had a bit of uh, time within hyper growth um, uh, startups with rocket internet, um, spent a, tried to do a bit of stuff within crypto. Uh, over the last couple of months, I've been more involved in deep tech with Origin. And so Origin is a deep tech venture um, foundry. So what we do is that we identify IP which is commercializable, um, work with the founders, build companies right through. Um, and then once ready to go off, you know, we take a bit more of a back seat, bring on board new investors. So that's kind of how that business model works. Mm, I see. Thank you for the introduction. So um, you mentioned that Origin Ventures is in deep tech, and I think that's an area that a lot of uh, business school graduates want to go in and think we can go into. But my question is, um, do deep tech startups need business school graduates? The short answer to that, yes. And the question for both parties would be, um, for the startup founders, when's the right time to bring on a B-School graduate and in what role? The B-School graduate, you have to ask yourself, do you have the right risk appetite at this point in time? Are you in an economic position to defer financial gratification? Right? Mm -hmm. So I think those are the key things, right? So if I look at deep tech with the demystify it a bit. Uh, many industries we know today was once novel, green feel, right? Hence, we just dump it, deep tech. Question we have to ask for ourselves would be, do you bring the commercial expertise, industry know-how, innovation and product creation expertise uh, to the table? You know, during the MBA program, it's a wonderful program. Then you have to ask yourself, wait, how do I help this venture succeed? You know, um, are there areas of gaps where if I'm co-founding or part of the founding team, that I can take over responsibility and bring it to the next level. Fundraising comes to mind, investor relations come to mind, strategy, financial modeling, operations, go to market, branding, marketing, talent, all those are things that a B-School graduate understands intuitively well. Mm, I see. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for sharing. So uh, my next question following on from that is, so uh, you mentioned a lot of skills. So how should business school graduates position themselves for a career in deep technology? Right. So career is a tricky one. I'll start with that. I think career is a transient. Um, I think I'd rather take a step back and say passion and purpose individually will what will govern our life, right? So don't look, think of it as careers. Think about what's your passion, what's your purpose. Um, two, most deep tech ideas fundamentally will fail, mm -hmm. right? Funding comes into mind. Consumer industry updates another fatigue of the team, right? It's not easy being the first one to create something, right? Yeah. Now, B-School graduates cover wide, complex subject matters, right? The key is, are you able to learn quickly, apply and tweak in a real life setting? Do you really want to pursue this area? Are you comfortable with the risk and radicule that will come along with it? So the bottom line would be, when you look at an opportunity, what are your passions? One, what finds fundamentally changing landscapes and what problems do you want to work with others to create solutions for? If you address that, careers will take care of itself. Mm, I see. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, may I just ask a quick follow-up on that? So if, if let's say a, a business school graduate wants to get into this area, get into this career, perhaps what is the first step that they can take? For example, what can they read or uh, what kind of activities should they join uh, in school? Build something. 
fundamentally, mm. I think the good thing about B schools would be, I think we have a couple of specialist business schools around the world. So I think about it at the global level. I'm not thinking about uh, Beta, right? But I think about globally, the only a couple of B schools which stand alone business schools. Most B schools are connected somehow to wider academia. In wider academia, there will be innovation. Drop yourself there. Find a place to say, hey, can I, can, I buy you, can I buy everyone coffee? Can I just figure out all the other stuff you don't want to do? Get involved in the process of proof of concept. Get involved in the concept, proof of concept, proof of validity. Get it to the first customer. If you're involved in it, you will learn things. So what I like about B-School graduates is that B-School, none of us in B-School having gone through it are fundamentally experts in 10 things. We're not. The great thing about B-School, in my view, would be your connector. And as mm -hmm. a connector, as a subject matter expertise, you know, I don't know enough about finance, but I need to head up the finance bit. So who do I talk to? I don't know enough about engineering. Who do I talk to? We're going to, uh, this company wants to do space. I have no idea. Where do I start, right? So those are areas that really, if you think about small team startups, someone needs to be connecting those dots. Someone needs to be the face out of the company and building things up. So that's the quick answer to it. Um, my quick advice might be, it's not about reading. The reading books, materials, I think you've covered it in business school. Um, lean startup methodology is there, but I think it's really in the doing because it's only in the doing that you actually ask yourself, do I like this process? Or is it much better for me at this point in my life to go off in a consultancy firm, um, an investment bank, go off in a classic MA program, write that out for a couple of years, maybe I'll come back to this space later, right? There's no, there's no right time to start. There is more about, um, are you ready for it? I see. Uh, thank you so much for the advice. And uh, I was looking at your LinkedIn profile. So uh, in addition to the description of Origin Ventures, so um, there's the phrase uh, that you built talent dense and globally impactful company. So uh, from your personal experience, uh, how do you do this? Right. Talent density is a wonderful construct and powerful when applied in the right creative endeavor. So one would be talent dense companies don't exist most of the time, right? Uh, my advice in that construct would be have a read on Aaron Meyer's book on Netflix, No Rules Rule, right? So I like it because it wasn't um, a corporate overview, right? This is a uh, academic professor saying, is this really true? What makes it work? And this is not a, um, com this is not a small company anymore. Right, it's not a Python. It's a much larger organization. So, um, have a read on uh, No Rules Rules. Right, I think that documents their journey, how they ended up there, what kind of work. Okay, um, it, uh, on that book, it's on my recommended reading list. So I normally tell every founder, you want to build a company, you want to talk about culture and values, um, no virtue signaling, no motherhood statement. Start with that, then figure out who you want to be, and then build it out. The approach I would normally uh, advise companies and founders would be one, only hire people full-time who share the same purpose and vision as you, okay? Full-time, that's one. Two, bring people in to the team who are different from you. Avoid group think, avoid herd instinct, right? Next, make sure they're better than you in one area, right? So if you're not very good at the fundraising or the investor side of things or the financial modeling, bring someone who's the best in that area, right? Who shares your vision, right? Now, if you can't, if any role doesn't fit in those three parameters, automate it, get a robot. You can destroy robots and get rid of them. At the moment, there's no crime to that. Outsource it or hire a contractor, right? So as over time, that core team will develop. And if you take that approach over time, your team will hire people who are better themselves. Right? And then over time, you'll find that as a leader, you'll do less work and you find that naturally there is a group that is growing the company more than you thought of. Right? So I think that's how you build talent. Things. I see. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. Um, just a quick follow-up question. So you mentioned that companies should hire people who share the same purpose or vision as the founders. Yeah. Um, I, I guess this is something that doesn't really show up on exam scores, right? So how, how do yeah. you assess this? I think the, the simple thing on that would be it's, um, it's very, I'll take an analogy from dating. Very fun, it's very often on hiring, uh, we normally put on our best face, right? Both a company as well as the person interviewing. Um, what we don't ask would be, and what the reality would be, we don't show where we're weak in, right? And why the hire happens. So I'd go back to what I mentioned earlier about um, 
talent density, so looking for people who are better than you, right? So the reality is that when you look for people who are better than you, we may not very often be best placed to judge them because we haven't done what they've done. We think they're better, but we don't know how much better. So the point would be beyond the first date, you get a certain level of comfort, right? I've never seen hires in founding teams that happen over one conversation. Mm -hmm. So I normally ask two things. Uh, one would be, it, it goes both ways, both from the founder as well as from the person interviewing. Can you spend 12 hours in a day with this person? Mm -hmm. Why, why not, right? One. Um, two, what do they want to do in their life and why do they want to do this, right? And very quickly, you'll find that um, there's a bit of a synergy. Either like, look, they're, they're going to give up something to do this. They're going to give up um, this fantastic internship opportunity. They're going to give up this MA program. They're going to give up this traditional career to want to do this. Is, are you sure? It's a risk. Mm -hmm. One, if they're going to give up, if you're willing to sacrifice something which is close to your heart, you know, or where you have, if it's this close to my heart, I want to do this. Okay? Right time. And you show me the worst that you're in and going through, and I kind of accept that. I'm happy to sit down and work with you. You're happy to sit down and work with me. We can see an alignment. That's the best way to move forward. So it's really um, works both ways for the leaders of companies to then decide this is where we are. And for the person coming on board to say, okay, um, I'm going to give up something to be here. And um, this vision of uh, this vision you have, I share that vision. And this is how I think of it slightly different. No one's going to share 100% the same vision. And if they do, they are an employee, not a co-founding team. Right. Yeah. So I think you'll find that there'll be a bit of a merger between the two. So I think that's how I've seen it work. And what I would advise people would be be kind of clear uh, when you talk to founders, um, w you know, why you're interested in a company, what sort of role you're interested in, and then it's a bit social. And you'll be surprised about what happens next. Hmm. I see. No, thank you so much for sharing. Um, yeah, with your answer, I can really see what you meant and start by, you know, the risk appetite yeah. as well as what you're truly passionate in, because it certainly sounds yeah. like it's a rewarding career, but you might need to sacrifice on the way as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So th thank you so much for joining us in this interview, and uh, we hope to keep in touch with you. Thank you so much, Nicholas. See you soon.